tell us about Malcolm Sayer? Well, Malcolm, uh, he was a big friend of mine, and I mean, I'd never met him until I joined Jaguar, but uh, my first introduction, I got a feeling that there was a good relationship between us straight away. I don't know why, it was just one of these things. That's nice. He was a very tall man, uh, very quiet, inoffensive. I never heard Malcolm ever say a crossword to anybody or get irate about anything. And so um, my connection with him was very close because of the uh, relationship of me testing the car that he designed. And uh, you're talking D type here. Well, all all, all the cars, uh, D-type, the D type, D type, all followed through with Malcolm. And um, he'd come from Farnborough to Jaguar, and he was there when I joined them. Of course, he'd already done the C type. Uh, my first uh, tie up with him was uh, with the D type. Yeah. And. Uh, before that, we had what we call the CD. That was a one-off design he'd done between the C-Type and the D. And that would have been the car that would have been raced after the C-Type, had we gone ahead with it. But it, we built the one, and uh, my connection with Malcolm was that he liked me to be in the wind tunnel with him, so we could, I could witness the wind tunnel testing. I knew very little about wind tunnel testing until I met Malcolm, and he taught me a lot. Uh, then following the wind tunnel, we then get the car uh, mobile running, start doing work on it, and we did what we call the uh, wool tough test. That was uh, ah, I've seen that. You that's right. We we used to go together. He'd be in a saloon car, of course, and uh, we'd go out to Nuneaton. On the way through to Nuneaton, there was a, uh, this lady's uh, wool shop and we used to stop and buy a skein of wool, a big skein of wool. Next door was the paper shop, we used to buy a roll of sellotape. Get to Myra, go in the garage and we used to cut the wool tufts about uh, five inch, six inches long. Cut lo loads of those. Malcolm would then uh, put lines across the bonnet, the door, all over the car, lines. And then we used to stick these wool tufts, these tufts of wool, every, about every six inches along these lines that he'd done. So in the finish, you had a car that was completely covered with these wool tufts. Yeah, yeah. The screen, everything, the doors, the back, the front. So what it was physically, we were driving the car through the air now, Nothing to do with the wind tunnel. No, yeah. This is outside on the track. He would be in a saloon car with somebody driving and he so he could observe out the side of the window and look at the side of the car. He would then uh, drop to the back and look at the back of the car. I would then do the bonnet, looking at the bonnet and what I could see here in the uh, cockpit. And um, the idea was you drove at speeds from sort of 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, up to 100 mile an hour, and uh, observe what was happening to those yes. wool tufts. Yeah. And uh, that would then, Malcolm would have enough information from that to relate to the wind tunnel. Brilliant. <laughs> and there's all, you see, that was a big thing with him on that, because a lot of the people who used the wind tunnel used to finish there after the wind tunnel test finished. But there is a big difference, well, a variation difference between the wind tunnel being uh, artificially air, air blown over the car yes. than when you are out on the track. Yeah. So they, um, and the deficiency was the wind tunnel was also giving you a bit better figure than you actually got In real terms. when you was on the track. Yeah. So that was again a, a big tie up with Malcolm and me. I've got all the test reports we did together. Um, different speeds and uh, things like that and uh, as I say he was a great character he didn't have uh, a great uh, what can I say expensive life he he was always struggling for money Did he used to turn up in a van oh yes he had a, <laughs> he had a van to his wife used to bring him to work they could only afford the van and he was never never well Jaguar didn't pay big salaries and uh, poor old Malcolm, although he was a brilliant 
uh, Gaiety's job. I don't think he was ever credited and paid no. the right uh, uh, salary, you know. But he again, he stayed there like all of us, part of that team. Yeah. That uh, built it up. So the love of the work. So it was love of work. Yeah, it wasn't the money we got. We didn't get much money, but it was the love of working together and achieving the ultimate uh, final end, yeah. where we produced a good car. Yeah. You know. So. Great car. <laughs> and I say it was a big loss to us when uh, poor old Malcolm passed away very quickly. He had a heart attack, and uh, you know, he one minute he was here, the next minute he'd gone. So. Um, he's got a, he had a lovely wife and, uh, and daughters, two daughters, but um, that's how it is. Sad, but it? as I say, my connection with him, a great man, I learnt a lot from him on uh, wind tunnel testing anyway, and uh, about low coefficient of drag and all that, I, he taught me a lot on that. I think he explained about his, his office and the way he would draft, I, I can't think, but there was a, there was a special yeah, way he had of doing well, what it, very in, unique. In his office he had round the wall um, about three foot depth and probably eight foot round the wall of uh, full scope. Right. Ten, ten uh, scale uh, markings on the map. And all across there would be all these long lines going round, eight foot across the wall. And uh, they would be coloured blue, green, yellow. And they all merged here and there on the wall. And f from that, I mean... He understood it. <laughs> he, he was the only one who's, who did it and understood it. And then they'd be vertical lines up with numbers going through these different colours. Wow. And he used to say to Malcolm, well, what's, what's, the, uh, what's the yellow line there? He'd say, oh, that's the bonnet form. That's the formation of the bonnet. Where it ends there and goes into the green, that's the cockpit. And uh, he could see the car yes. in those lines. On those lines. I couldn't. <laughs> to me, they were just amazed. That Massive lines. But Malcolm had got what it. And uh, it was his own, uh, it wasn't his formula. I asked him one day, I said, how did you formulate this uh, relationship of turning these lines into the actual car? And uh, when he was uh, in India, he, he was in India for many, many years. What was he doing there? Uh, it was something to do, I think, with the, the army or something oh, like okay. that. That's a word back then. But he met up with this German professor and this German professor was a real good stylist and uh, architect of car of shapes, and he taught him this oh, uh, uh, this formula. And I say, uh, the German guy died years ago, so Malcolm was the only one with this formula. And after his death, people went in, Bob Knight and all of them, looking, and t uh, to that day they never knew how, <laughs> how he worked those curves into the car. That's brilliant. But when you saw the car develop from what he got on that wall, you got a beautiful, yeah. beautiful line. This, yeah. I mean, the D-type and the E-type. and uh, Everything he designed. Everything he designed was so good. Yeah. I mean, the XJ13, it's a fabulous yeah. shape. Yeah. Still, still a great yes, shape absolutely. today. I mean, it's still got the lowest coefficient of sports cars they don't make today. They don't make them as slow as that, you know. Low. And look at the size of them as well compared to the 13, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Brilliant. A brilliant. great man, uh, and I say, uh, could have been appreciated a bit better by Jaguar, but there you go, it's, yeah. it's one of those things, yeah. you know. But uh, I love working with him, and uh, as I say, I don't see that today, these working people working as we did in those no, days. You know. no.